Bible says God is fearful in praises. That means he does things that will make you fear when you pray. So we can't be talking about a night of wonders and we come, you know, and be reformed. No, we are not reformed. I hope you understand that. We are not reformed. Amen. We are totally yielded to the Holy Spirit. And we will go in his direction. You miss the place to shout amen. amen. You miss the place to shout a bigger amen. amen. Before we sit down, I thank God for that charge by Pastor Stanley. Yeah, because any atmosphere or anywhere you will see signs and wonders, prophetic words must precede signs and wonders. You know, prophetic words must receive, precede signs and wonders. Let's quickly check Acts of the Apostle, uh, chapter 14, verse 3. As we stand, we will be sitting down very soon. Amen. Amen. Am I the only one that is uh, hot? Or you guys? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Acts of the Apostle, chapter uh, 14, verse 3. If we, if we have found it, let, let us all read it together like warriors, not like reformed people. Let's read it like warriors. Let's go now. Long time. Now, you know what will happen? Because of your declaration, you will not just be a recipient of signs and wonders, but signs and wonders shall be done by your hands. Yeah. I don't know when you go out now, you just touch people, somebody. You said, I'm, I'm sick. You demand, be well. Amen. 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 You know what I mean? Be well. Be well. Hallelujah. Lord, you will say it you know, and the person has to be well. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. So I want you to declare in this ambience, declare, release healing. And I will tell you, just release healing virtue. Still, you see, let me tell you. I was in my study today, and uh, a man of God make, made, he made one statement. He said, the gift, of the, the gift of healing is likened to a steered pool. He said, so you dive in and you are healed. You stand. You don't have any input. I don't know whether you understand. It's just that you sit down here and a man of God is preaching. And he will just say, you are here. You are the doctor has said so, so, so. Your own is that the only thing you did that was that you were present. You submitted yourself. And it will tell you in the name of Jesus, you'll be here, go and test, and you, you test. You understand? But such things, all right, you may lose it over time. We are going the way in which you get your healing and retain it. Lord. Amen and amen. amen. You know what Casey Price said? After they built Crenshaw Christian Center, he said, take everything I've, I've achieved in life from me. I will get them faster. You understand? Because they were not given to me. When, they are not, when he said they were not given, please understand. Every good and every perfect gift from, comes from God. What he's trying to say is that I followed a principle. A principle gave it to me. Are we here? And... I can repeat that principle because I've proven over years that this thing works. So he said, I didn't just jump. A man you see on top of the mountain didn't drop there. He climbed. Don't ever forget that. If you see somebody on top of a mountain, no helicopter dropped him. Are we here? The man climbed. Are we here? Amen. Amen. Did, you, did you get that? Any man you see on top of any mountain, you understand? I'm not talking that helicopter cannot. This is just a proof. I'm trying to say there was an effort. 
Amen and amen. amen. So if he sees any other mountain, he can climb it. But if an helicopter dropped you, and they now take you to the base of another mountain, they say climb. You say you will tell them you are waiting for the first helicopter. Are we here? Yes. Amen. So I want you to fill the atmosphere with healing virtues. Just declare that there shall be healings, there shall be deliverances. Declare it. Declare it. Wait, 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 wait. They said they stood there a long time. Your own will be short time. But declare boldly. You are at least declare boldly. Let it be very forceful. These are the things that, let if you speak in tongues, charge the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. Yes. Kosh, 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 forget this. Yes, I'm from the Kosh, 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 forget this. Kosh, 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 forget this. Yes, kosh, 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 forget this. Yes, kosh, 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 forget this. Yes, kosh, 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 Yes, 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 that are here. Amen. I thank you because as they move around to touch people, Amen. may we not be disconnected. Amen. May the miracles of today endure. Amen. May the deliverances of today endure. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May they be permanent. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You can really have your seats. Turning hopeless situations around. Amen. Because it's, um, it's our all night. Night of wonders. Thank you for being here. The next thing I want to thank you for is your attentiveness. 
Let me tell you, prophecies are good. Do you understand? Because the Bible says, don't despise prophecies. But I bet you teaching is better. Do we understand? Because when nobody is there to prophesy to you, you can take your, you can take your lesson note and apply principles. I don't know whether maybe I make sense. Because if miracles, if miracles was everything, then Jesus should perform miracles, should have performed miracles of bread every day. It was only two times. In 33 and a half years, so John on at or are, are, are we here? Praise God. How many times did he walk on water? Once. And somebody said, two, two people went to Israel. And they wanted them to take them through the uh, Sea of Galilee. And they asked for the fee. You understand? You know all this tour, tour of Israel. Uh, Thames, on, Thames Valley. You know all this uh, boat ride. So they wanted Sea of Galilee. By the time they gave them their price, they gave them a very high price. And one of them replied that no wonder Jesus Christ walked on water. <laughs> you didn't get the joke. You said, you said, you're, you're stand. Because he felt that the price was too much. So the evangelist looked at the man and said, this is the amount you want to talk. He said, okay, I now see why Jesus had to walk on water. Because it was too expensive. That was just a joke. Amen. Have fun. And let our hearts be open. Amen. Amen. But, you see, principles work every day. Are we here? You do get what I'm trying to say? Principles work every day. You jump, you come down, because there is a law in place called the law of gravity. What is a miracle? A miracle is a temporary suspension of natural law to give, you know, a divine law a voice. It's a temporary suspension of, of uh, what I call physical laws. Is that not so? To allow a superior law or divine law to have an expression. Amen. Did you get what I'm trying to say? So what, what, what uh, a miraculous experience will tell you is that, come, physical law, why not just wait a minute? Just give me a time. I just want to superimpose myself. Amen. Are we here? <coughs> I will soon pack my bag and luggage and you will return to natural laws. I don't know whether it, make, it makes sense. Oh, amen. amen. Oh, God. I hope your heart is not closed. No. Amen. amen. Please, don't let your heart be closed. What I'm trying to say is that even though God is going to write miracles, still take something out. Amen. amen. We are not magicians. I hope you understand. So teaching has to precede. Because why should teaching proceed? Luke chapter 5 verse 17. Quickly, we have to. Luke 5 17, we have to rush. Because it's a night of wonders. Luke chapter 5 verse 17. Are we there? Can we read it? Yeah. As he was what? Yeah, yeah. As he was what? As he was waving his hand? No. As he was waving his handkerchief? No. Oh, are we here? Yes, sir. As he was teaching. Uh -huh. Continue. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Can you imagine as he was teaching, even in the face of his enemies, the Pharisees, yeah. who are his enemies, who are always opposing him, 
opposing him everywhere he went, could not stop the power of God because teaching was in place. So I don't care if there are witches. I don't care if there are wizards. I don't care, you understand? It will not stop the power of God amen. from doing what it is said to do. Amen. Help me shout a big amen. amen. Shout it louder if you are not diabolic. Yeah. You don't get that? The power of God was present to him. Imagine Pharisees were, the, I mean, they finally killed him. You understand? Imagine those who are opposing you being present. Because the teaching was sound. The teaching was sound. Let me show you somewhere what the secret of the anointing. St. John's Gospel, yeah. chapter 3. Yeah. Because people don't know. It is not that he came and he was waving an handkerchief. No. Uh, if there is, if there is uh, uh, a reason for that, amen. St. John's Gospel, this, uh, verse, chapter 3, verse 34. Let's quickly go because we, we are going to share the word of God. You should be able, I mean, somebody traveled, he had an incurable disease, and the gift <coughs> of healing flowed through Catherine Kuman, and the person was miraculously healed. The person traveled back to her base after about one or two years. He met a man of God. He said, I cannot tell my husband. The symptoms are back, are back. I can't tell my husband. You know, because somebody you are helping to believe. Somebody maybe who was always, who was into science. Who was skeptic. It was an incurable disease. And he said, I can't tell anybody. And the man of God asked him. I asked the woman. So, oh, do you know why it came? He said, I don't know. Every, he said, it's even worse than it was. And he said, because you were not taught. The gift flowed. They picked you out. But what will retain it? A lot of people get healed by the laying down of hands. Some fall under the bread. Take it. Are we here? And they go home to die after six months. They thought they were healed or they were healed. But because there is nothing, are we here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To help them retain it, it is teaching. What you have on your inside. They asked a small child. You understand, a man has been battling temptation. He didn't know. Temptation left, right, and center. Yeah. A man of God has battled temptation. Temptation kept knocking him and knocking him and knocking him on every side. He didn't fall into it, but temptation everywhere. So he now said, how will I overcome this uh, uh, attack on my mind? He just saw a small child's play. You understand? He's a Christian, raised in a Christian home. He said, young boy, come. He said, when <laughs> Satan comes knocking at your door, you understand? What do you do? The guy was still playing football. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll send Jesus to him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah. I've been the one opening the door. That's why they have been capturing me. You didn't get. He said, every time they open it, I said, who is that? <laughs> you know, they, they just put a hook on the neck and drag him out. So, <laughs> a small child. Please, it's getting too cold now because don't put my people to sleep. <laughs> Warm it up a bit. Are we here? Yes, so if I'm feeling sleepy standing, imagine those who are sitting down. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Hit it or hit it or if it's getting too hot, I will, will be regulating it as I preach. <laughs> Did you get that? He said, I will send Jesus to him. The guy didn't think. He was just playing. It was a story told by A.W. Tozer. A.W. Tozer, one of the greatest men that worked on this place. He 
Jesus Christ says, I will send Jesus to him. Say, eh? So I've been the one. In other words, when temptation comes, you quote the word. Amen. That is you sending Jesus. You saw it is written. It is written. It is written. Was that not what? Jesus sending the word to every temptation. Instead of telling the devil, take time, it's not good. Is that how to resist temptation? Are we here? Satan, why are you doing this to me? It's not good. It's not good. I'm on a fast. He will tell you that. He came (laughs) when Jesus didn't eat for 40 days. That was when he came. Your fast. That, means, that tells you that fasting does not drive temptation. Because if fasting drives temptation, after 40 days, you should run away from Jesus. That was when he now came. <laughs> you don't use fasting, amen, as the only weapon to combat temptation. You use the word. Are we here? Did you see that? Let's now read quickly. Powerfully. Join me. John 3 34. For God give that if you speak the word of God, what happened? Do we have too much anointing? Oh, I didn't say that. Did I, did I say that? He for him whom God has sent. So if God has sent you, learn to speak his word. And you are going to receive reckless anointing. Amen. You will receive the anointing without measure. Amen. Uh, did you say, he who God has sent should come and wave handkerchief? Eh? Is that what brings the anointing? Answer now. No. Or is it because you've been waving it? Are we here? There is time for everything. Did you get what I'm trying to say? He who God has sent, speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the what? Spirit, the anointing by measure. In other words, God will not measure it for you. He won't give it loot. Are we here? The spirit will be full. So we don't want a situation in which people will get healed and they lose it. People will get healed and they lose it. As soon as um, our sister, Sister Memuna, was healed of cancer, Amen. you understand? I thank God for what she did. I didn't, just by hearing the word of God, she quickly took Nahum 1 yeah. 9. I didn't tell her. Oh, I'm free. He said, Affliction shall not arise. What? A second. She tells herself night and day. And she, she also has John chapter 8, verse 36. He whom the Son has set free must be free indeed. I didn't tell her. She came and told me, say, Pastor, these are the words, am I correct? I said, right on. She says it almost every time. Some will be going from, they will be now be carrying you up and down to testify. And there's nothing inside of you. Yeah. Until that thing will now attack you to, to mess up your testimony. But that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. I hope our hearts are open. Amen. Amen. He that speaks the word, the, you understand? The secret of signs and wonders is in the word. Exodus. Let's che- see. Exodus. He said, You shall take the road where we sh- thou shalt what? Do signs. Exodus. Chapter 4, verse 17. Exodus 4, 17. Exodus 4, 17. Quickly. Let's read. I thank God for the, the person, uh, the consul. The Lord will bless you. Amen. You are making me flow with ease. Amen. Amen. Not that we call Exodus and you are in, Levi- you are in uh, Jeremiah. We thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Can we read it powerfully? Mm-hmm. You shall take the rod where which thou shalt take sign. So don't go and buy a physical rod. Don't do the mistake of Peter. When God, uh, 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 Peter, when Jesus told them that they should go and 
by what they had and by the sword, which is the sword of the spirit. It was a proverbial word. Peter went to buy a literal sword and kept it. He was following Jesus up and down with dagger. And as soon as they, they caught Jesus, he said, what? No wonder he told us to buy. <laughs> the ear flew. <laughs> Out of anger, blood gushing. Oh, you are doing your face like that. When you meet him in heaven, you protest. <laughs> he caught the physical ear. Yeah. Because when Jesus Christ said, go and buy the sword, he went and bought he said, we know I'm a fisherman. You understand? Because he knows how to slice the operculum of fishes. <laughs> you know what the operculum is? Yeah. He knows how to cut off the operculum. So to cut the ear of anybody was not an issue. <laughs> are, are we here? And Jesus Christ said, hey. So you went to buy sword. So now, why is it? Don't carry rod up and down. Do you understand? Don't carry rod. This. Jesus is the rod. Can we shout it louder to the shame of the devil and to the glory of God? Jesus! Jesus! Isaiah chapter 11, yeah. from verse 1. Let's see. Isaiah 11. You see, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the rod. Jesus is the rod. Yeah. Isaiah 11, verse 1. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And there shall come forth what? Oh, uh -huh. Out of what? The stem. And a branch, you see that branch? Capital shall grow out of what? His roots. Uh -huh. Let's go. Verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Wait, 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 wait. Did you see? The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Is that not so? Luke 4, 18. Let's see. Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Let's see who the spirit of the Lord rested upon. Because I told you Jesus is the rod and Jesus is the word. Let's see. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. <laughs> so who is the rod? Jesus. Who is the rod? Jesus. Did you see that? He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. But in, in Isaiah 11 verse 2. He said the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon this rod. You, are you see, did you get that? The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon this rod that we are talking about. That's what they call the seven spirit of God. The spirit of lordship, you understand? The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. Seven spirit of... So you start with, the spirit of the Lord is a spirit. Yeah. You understand? People don't count it, they will say, oh, it's six. No, the spirit of, Lord, of the Lord is also a spirit. What is that spirit? It is a spirit that lost it over problems. It bullies problems. It bullies sickness. Let's go back to Luke 4, 18 and see what the spirit of the Lord does. In case you don't know what the spirit of the Lord does, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to deal with sickness and poverty. You do see that? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. What? To what? The poor. Amen. You don't deliver the poor. You preach to them. Yeah. You teach them. Go and work hard. Do you understand? Even if you check Matthew 11, you will still see it there. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Are we here? You don't deliver the poor. You have your hand. So if you are looking for oil up and down to pour upon you so that you won't be poor, you will be, you, that oil will sink you and you will be poor. The poor have the gospel preached to them. You preach. You understand? This is what to do. 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 Amen. 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 Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. Are we here? Now, and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You know your heart can be broken. Have you ever heard that that man broke my heart? 
There is an anointing for it. Have you ever heard that that woman broke my heart? That's the sea, Pepperin. There is an anointing for it. Oh, are we here? It can't, is God not good? Healing heartbreaks. Because he knows, he, he knows how emotional the emotional wound you might carry. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Emotional wounds, heartbreak, disappointment, broken hearted. He said God can heal it. To preach deliverance to the captives. So uh, if you just come, you know, you, without the word, you are pushing people down. The way, the, the way some people hit some people who are sick, you should fall down. Because they hit you as if it's, a, it's WWE. What do I rest? Have you ever said, take it for somebody who is sick? And when the person goes, I said, that is it. It should be it. You can't punch somebody like that and you say it's not it. That's a punch. Did you, do you see it? Some funny things. So some unacceptable things. Take it. You see, I've been under, there was a man of God in those days who was so anointed and in fact, it created a problem for him because he couldn't explain why people were, were falling. The man was too anointed. So when they said I was going to go to the meeting, what do we expect a rebel to do? So I stiffened my leg that all these people, I was waiting for him. He didn't get that. I was waiting. How can everybody be fallen? So my leg was like this. You know what happened? <laughs> Are you, <laughs> you know what happened? The only thing is that I didn't know what happened. I saw that they have passed me. By the time I woke up, he was on another. He is gone. He was on maybe the tenth person after me. He didn't get what I'm trying to say. The last thing I saw was that he touched the person before me. That was what I remembered. <laughs> I didn't know what happened. Those are tangible anointing. Yeah. Not take it with, uh, because you've gone to the gym. That's not good. You preach deliverance to the captives. You tell the captives, you are going to be seen today, you preach deliverance. To them. You tell them what the word has said concerning yeah. your case. Amen. Then the recovering of sight to the blind, not just physical sight, too. even spiritual and physical sight, you will understand. When they say re re recovering of sight, have you had it restored my soul? Yeah. It's a type of sight recovery. Yeah. What you once believe, you don't believe it again. Because recovering of sight means you were seeing before. <laughs> then something blinded it, and they gave it back to you to start seeing what you were seeing before. Oh, why not shout a big amen? Amen. 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 To set at liberty those who are bruised. You can see the function of the spirit of the Lord. It is the spirit that lures it over every satanic oppression. The spirit lures it over every satanic oppression. Are we here? Yes. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach. One of the things... That we you have to do about deliverance is this. Hmm? Zechariah 2 7. You know what? Let, let her just go to the back. I understand. Maybe you are coming from work. Because that thing is inductive. If you first sweep all over that line, they move. Amen. Uh, please, who can get her coffee? Without sugar, please. Quickly. Amen. The Lord is your strength. Eh? The Lord Almighty is your strength. You, 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 you tried coming. Eh? God bless you. Don't blame yourself. Coffee is coming. Amen. Are, are, are we here? Can we read it powerfully? Amen. 
Did they say they will deliver you? Deliver yourself. You will see a man because I, you want to see a man who delivered himself. He got angry and he delivered himself. Are we here? Deliver thyself, O Zion, O church of the living God, that dwells among children of the devil. Deliver yourself. Deliver yourself. Are we here? But if we don't have the weapon to deliver yourself, what happens? Uh, you understand, if you are, you are a military person, you are not trained. Because we are soldiers of Christ. But there is no army that is not trained. Yeah. There is no army that is not trained. Grace, 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 grace now is robbing us of training. It's not by power, it's not by might. If my spirit said the Lord, the spirit said, deliver yourself. Yeah. The spirit said, deliver yourself. Are we here? A lady called me sometime, some time ago. She, she was a bookworm then. She would read and read and read and read and read and read and read. And uh, she's from an aristocratic background, you know, the daughter of an ambassador. So she called me, she said, Pastor Olu? I said, yes. They said it's not by power or by mind that I'm reading too much. So I don't know what to do. I'm confused. I don't know what that will do. I said, if we reduce it, your grade will reduce. Yeah. Don't mind that they are lazy. Do you understand? He said, grace makes you to read. Grace does not make you to sleep. First Corinthians 5, 15, 10. Let's see what grace does. Grace will make you overdo. Grace does not underdo. In fact, why you will know it is grace is because you will overdo. And you will not collapse. Did you get that? He said, I am what? I am what I am by the grace. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. You understand? And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labor more. <laughs> he said, I labor more than they are. Not yet, yet not I. But the grace of God that work in me. So grace does not make you do less. Grace is not the spirit of mediocrity. It is the spirit of excellence. Philippians 1.10 tells us that we should approve only things that are excellent. Excellence is not something you pick up. It's something you work for. He said approve it. This, the spirit of grace says approve things that are excellent. So how can the spirit of grace that tells you to approve things that are excellent now make you be mediocre? No, no, how, how, how can he make you be mediocre? He said, come, when grace came, I labored more than them all. Yet not I, I labored more than them all. I devoured the word. Are we here? Praise God. Hallelujah. That ye may approve things that are excellent. So if, if, oh God, Father help me. See, if, if, okay, the, the bottom line was that, when it came, hmm? oh, they announced her result all over England. Yeah. It was A plus. A plus, A plus, A plus. About the best so far. Yeah. And they announced the result. Oh, the, the, the tabloid announced because it was excellent. I said, what did I tell you? I said, those by grace, where are they? You, are we getting my point? When they are going to prestigious universities like uh, Cambridge and whatever, others. Maybe they are now selling meat. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, my apologies to me, sellers. I'm not saying that. I'm just using yeah. that. But that is not. You should understand. If we didn't intend to do that and you yeah. ended up doing it, it is that person I'm talking to, not yeah. you, yeah. who have chosen it as a profession. Are you here? Praise God Almighty. Because everything now is, everything you now say now, they will say you are not politically correct. Things that we should hammer so that your head will hammer. So they say you are not politically correct. Let's call the speed the speed. What is good is good. Are we here? Why not shout a big amen? amen. Turn to 
turning hopeless situations around. If you are not ready to turn your stand, the word of God is a prerequisite. You must value the word. You must honor the word. If not, whatever you take here today, the enemy can take it back from you. Yeah. But, okay, now, can they take your, uh, Sister Ronke, can they take your English language from you? Yeah. Uh-huh. Because you studied for it. Yeah. Because you studied for it. If they come and ask you, what's your name? You tell them that my name is. When, you, when it will come to the point where you can no longer speak English after all this education, then we know you need serious deliverance. Uh, do you understand? It is then we will now begin to look for oil that is very hot to pour on your head. Yeah. I don't know whether it makes sense yeah. to us. Are we here? Yes, sir. Shout a big amen. amen. Shout a bigger amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah t- chapter 38 because we 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 we, we, we pray and we pray. But we want to see one or two things. I read from verse number one. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the son of Amos came unto him. And said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thy house in order. In order for thou shalt die and not live. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. You do get what I'm saying? Thus yes, said the Lord. Thank you, Sister Grace. The Lord will honor you. Thank you very much. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. Mark that word, thus said the Lord. Thou shalt die from God. You shall die, you will not live. And you understand? Let's see what he did. Because there are some thus said home office now that some people cannot sleep. Thus said home office. Do you know today when I was praying, I said every vision is appealable. Yeah. Don't ever forget that. If you saw your there is no vision that is not appealable. If you saw yourself in the coffin, God showed you so that you appeal it. <laughs> Amen and amen. Every evil vision and every good vision is appealable. You can say you don't want any good vision. If you saw yourself buying the rose and not praying about it, that means you have two heaven I don't want. It will not come to pass. You don't need to tell them I don't want. Your attitude will tell them. He said, as he claimed this, no, he has not done anything. A colleague of mine met me some years ago when I was on my circular job. Oh, he said, I saw a vision. I saw myself in maybe Kuwait. I started working in oil company and whatever. And I said, what did you do? He said, oh, that's what I saw. I said, okay, wonderful. If you saw witches removing your eye, <laughs> this is very well. If it was witches removing your eye, what would you say? Ah, ah. Oh, I'm all, I go go into fast, you know. Lie, lie. I go pray my head. I said, can you see? This is where we miss it. You see good, you don't claim. You see evil, you are jumping up and down, fight. Anytime you see anything good, fast and pray and claim it. Because everything that is called promise is in reality in the realm of the spirit. Everything is real. It is waiting for you to take. Are we here? We are going to see it here today. And please, if you are sick in any part of your body, I want your heart to open up. I want your heart to open up. Because there is no greater deliverance than this. Are you ready to know? Are you you ready to know the best way to get delivered? Are you ready? We are going to come to this. John chapter 8 verse 32. Because people want Someone who will push them down, spit on them, kick them. And that is why we see all manner of stupid tapes uh, being circulated. You understand? Because you are a prophet, you put your tummy, your, your leg on somebody's tummy. A pregnant woman. Who are you? Who are you? Messing up things. You understand? The Bible says, 
when God, Jesus was preaching, the power of God was present to him. And at the time, the said, come, he cast the demons with his word. Not with punches. He cast those demons out with his word. Yes. Amen. Yes. At least Pastor Stanley has followed me to go and minister in yeah. some places. I don't, I don't touch. Yeah. I don't touch. You see demons yeah. crying out. Yeah. Yes, sir, they will just cry out. If you are not crying, it's because you don't have demons. <laughs> are, we, are we here? Yeah. So shout hallelujah that you are demonful. Yeah. But every time I go out, as soon as I climb and say, shout hallelujah, I'll see people manifest. Crying out. Crying out to disturb the meeting. And I'm smarter than that. Because if you are not very careful, that's when you will now be praying, hallelujah. Move. And they will just cut her. They told you to come and preach. At the end of the day, they won't take anything. Catch her! Catch her! Yes! Yes! Another one will cry there. Confusion. Oh yeah, hold her! Yes, yes, hey, hey. At the end of the day, hey, ha, hey, ha, hey, ha. Let another person come, another preacher, they will do that. And you can't, you don't know that it's an association. Yeah. Association of meetings, scatterers. Yeah. Have you noticed that in some places it's the same set of people that come out? They never get it's the same set of people. Apostle Palango comes, they will all come. Akonso Kalandindo, they will offer. Bishop Boom Boom, they will offer. Every, the same set of people, just be marking them. But when you begin to tell them that, okay, just check their faces that you fell the other time, you are free, don't come again. <laughs> new fallers come out, new fallers. They will not come. Do you know that when, when I go there and they are falling down, I don't get excited. You know, I say, ushers, pick them out. Pick them out. They are not for this meet. Pick them out. I will meet them after them. They will not keep quiet. <laughs> so what happened? Pick them out, deliver them. Be smart. This is where the discernment of the spirit is very... So you get excited and at the end of the day, every teaching you prepared, they knew where you were studying. That, ah! If people see this, oh, their nightmare will finish. How do we do it? Say, as soon as the man climbs up, cry out. Let him feel important. He will think he's anointed. You, you cry out on the leg. Carl, you cry out in the center. Confuse them. And if you are not careful, ah, shh, then, then, so, so I'm as anointed as this. Look at, yeah, yeah, reality or They don't even know my body. That's, <laughs> you see, you see. <laughs> You will not be angry with your church. <laughs> you will be angry with those you have taught. Who are, you, you, are demoni you have de demonized them. You will not be angry with those you should be happy with. That they don't know my value. I went there, they were all crying. I come here and they will just be cold. Because it is well with them. Amen. Why not shout a big amen? amen. Now did you see that? He said, you shall know what? The truth. And the truth shall? Set free. Did you get that? So the best form of freedom is knowing the truth and applying yourself yes. to the demands of the truth. Yes. Knowing the truth does not set you free. Yes. It's an incomplete statement. Are we here? You will know the truth. Just understand. The truth may be drink water. I'm not talking about drink water of Chelsea. It's a player. I'm talking about drink water like this. Did you see? That may be the truth. Drink water. Are we here? You know it. That's the truth. If we don't drink the water, what will happen? You will die. You knew the truth. You didn't do the truth. So it is not enough to know the truth. You must do the truth. Shout a big amen. Amen. Shout a bigger amen. amen. Let's go back to Isaiah. So I just wanted to know, because we don't want to teach the truth. We will not uh, waste time. We want to teach the truth. By the time there is now a command. Amen. There is now a command to the truth. There is a command. Then you yield to that command. When they say, say, 
You don't keep quiet. You don't keep quiet. Amen. Amen. There is a com- they may give you a command. Okay, let me quickly tell you. Sorry, let me just flow. Let me just, I've locked myself off for a long time for the sake of this. So let's flow. John chapter 12 verse 49. John 12 49. John chapter 12 verse 49 and 50. Let's see. God can give you a command. God Almighty can give you a command. That may be your own part of the deal. God can say, don't ever say this again. That may be your own, your stand, that if you want to be free from this cancer, don't ever say this again. Keep saying this. Are we here? Can we read it? So, it is not self-speaking. You know self can speak. I am a doctor, I am this self, self self-promotion. Jesus Christ says, come, I didn't brag that, you know, I was born of the Holy Ghost. I didn't, I didn't brag that you stand and nobody slept with my mother. It was the Holy Ghost. I didn't brag. I didn't allow self. If you're not very, very careful, self can take over. You stand. Self means ego. That's another word for it. So I didn't allow ego. Are we here? To take a better part of me. If you're not very careful, ego can take a better part of me. Before we know it, somebody can just harass you. You say, do you know who I am? And you are talking based on the amount you think you have. And the person talking to you, that's my child. The head of the principality in the area. So what you are using to answer her cannot deal with her. In fact, that is the end of your life, financially. If you allow self to speak. Are we here? Don't allow self to speak. Let the word speak through you. Let's read it. He said, I have not spoken of myself, uh-huh, but the father who sent me. Uh-huh, he gave me a command. What I should say. Uh-huh, and his commandment is life everlasting. Amen. Even therefore, is that not so? Whatsoever therefore, whatever, whatsoever I speak therefore, even as the father said unto me, so I speak. So, can I tell you one of the commandments? I am the good shepherd. Amen. Keep checking what he said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. I am the resurrection and the life. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Did you see his confession? Yeah. Oh, you now, I am the rejected. I am the one my father doesn't want to hear. I am the least. No. He gave me a commandment. Yeah. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the light of the world. Oh, God. So, even though he was saying, I am, he was not braggadocious because he received the commandment. Because if he did not declare that he was resurrection and life, he would not have resurrected. He kept declaring it. I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are, 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 we, are we blessed today? Yes, sir. So, your own commandment can be, they can give you a commandment. This is what you should say. That may be your part of the day. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And I said, it's not enough to know the truth. He gave him a commandment. What you should say and how to say it. Yeah. Are we here? Yeah. So, what if he didn't obey that commandment? Are we here? Did you hear Ezekiel 37? I prophesied as commanded. Uh-uh. I, and I prophesied as commanded. Did you see that in Ezekiel 37? That Ezekiel, why dry bones came alive? Well, because he prophesied as commanded. So your own dry bones will change today. Amen. If only you will prophesy as commanded. Why not shout a big amen? amen. Hallelujah. Back to uh, Isaiah 38, quickly. Back to Isaiah 38. Uh, I read from verse number two. Because I have to highlight something. You know, I will begin to read. I have to highlight something so that you understand that God said you shall 
die and not live. Thus say the Lord. That's the point I want. Because, if, because by the time I say, turn a hopeless situation around, in other words, if somebody can turn God's decree around, it is not the decree of the mayor that cannot be turned. That's where I'm going. It's not the decree of the head of state that can be turned. The almighty, the creator of all the ends of the earth says, you shall die. By one of the greatest prophets ever. Yeah. He was, okay, I know the people classify mine now a major prophet. Okay, Isaiah was major. Did you see that? He had 66 books. A type of the Bible. A type of the Bible. You understand? The, the, there are 66 chapters. You understand? First 30, Isaiah 1 to 39 was like Old Testament. Isaiah 40 to 66 is like the New Testament. A prophetic Bible on its own. Yeah. Are we here? A, a, a type. <laughs> Can you imagine a prophet that God put fire on his lips? Yeah. Yeah. A prophet that before he started his prophetic ministry, he said, stretch your tongue. And from heaven, they put cone of fire to burn up every yamayama out of his mouth. I don't know. Yeah. Not a prophet that just your head like a coconut, and it's a prophet. Oh, you didn't get what I'm trying to say. This one in Isaiah chapter 6, he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I discovered that I am a man of unclean lips, living among unclean people. You understand? Then they put coal of fire to burn off the unclean. Such a person should prophesy, you say it's a lie. That was the kind of person, that was the pedigree of the person that said you shall die. Not uh, all these Yamayama prophets. Are we here? Did you get what I'm trying to say? Why not shout a big amen? amen. Because I know why I'm emphasizing that. The, 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 the main point is verse 1. That you shall die and not, and not live. That's, that's what I want to highlight. What he's saying to you that is not almighty. Telling you you will die. Is there anything telling you you will die today that is not almighty? Go and sleep. Amen. Amen. Because the Almighty has told somebody that the person will die, and the person defiled the word of the Lord. <laughs> oh God. I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to say. You shall not, he said, you know the best, put your house in order to me. You say, I check other translations and I like put your affairs in order. It's better for me than put your house in order. Because he lived and he didn't put his house in order. He didn't tell his children that, okay, put your house in order means write your will. Yes. Yes. Are we here? He didn't write his will. But there, are, there was another disorderliness in his life that I saw. Yes. Which I want to say because he didn't put his house in order. Yes. Verse 2. Praise the Lord. And Ezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. That means no more Facebook. Are we here? The age that we live in is a very difficult age. <laughs> Anyone that can throw away his phone for three days is a spiritual person. I don't know whether you understand. It's a very noisy age. I don't know if maybe I'm speaking. Can you just go on Facebook if you have a message for the people? Hello. He turned and faced the wall. He backed the public. That means, you know what? He backed. He faced the wall. That means he could not consider, he could, he could not check his, uh, what do I call it? His symptom. His eyes were closed to the symptom. His eyes were closed. Amen. Amen. 
to the prophet. You know some people will hold as a, a Isaiah. Ah, that you can't go. Help me beg God. He knew it was beyond Isaiah. Thus said the Lord. He said, this time around, you stand, let me talk to him. Amen. You've been our mouthpiece, but today I will speak to God on my own. Amen. Because it was not Isaiah they told that he would die. Yeah. So Isaiah may be interested in saying, you know what? <laughs> Have we ever been there before? Somebody is not praying well concerning your issue. You are complaining. That man of God is a stupid man. Imagine, he was drinking coke, praying for me. You know, get mouth. Are we, do you know people get offended? Kenneth Hagin recorded of how somebody came. He, stand, he said, he lays hands. I mean, no wonder. You see, there is no magic in all these things. So. Kenneth Hagin taught healing from October of one particular year to, I think, April or so. Almost every day. Yeah. Every day. I don't know whether you understand. Every day, almost 180 days. Every day, healing. Maybe morning and evening. And sometimes, ha. And I was thinking, I said, ha. They must be very sick around that area. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Every day. And one day, the day God told him not to lay hands, was the day they brought somebody from Missouri. The person flew down, and uh, Kenneth Hagin said, meet one of the, uh, the instructors. And they, they put the person on the line, meet Brother Ken. Ah, I came to see our boss. He said, meet Brother Ken. The person hissed. They hissed. There was nothing they didn't say against Kenneth Hagin on their way home. On their way home. That can you imagine flying all the way? This man did they touch us? Hey? Ordinary instructor. Let me tell you, you are not ordinary when you have the word of God in your, in your heart and on your lips. In fact, you are ordinary as a bishop and apostle if you don't have the word of God. Yeah. And you are mighty as a brother. Yeah. It was not an apostle that opened the eyes of Paul. It was a disciple. Yes. <laughs> they said one disciple called Ananias, go and meet him. <laughs> it, was not a, it was not an apostle. It was not a prophet that opened the eyes of apostle, brother Saul, yeah. son of Sassos. They said there is a, a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias, disciple, disciple. So you can't be a miracle worker if you are not a follower. A disciple means a student. So that person must have understood someone. You are not qualified to be called a disciple if you are not a student of somebody. Dis discipleship means you are a student. Who have you been understanding? Go and check the word disciples is you are a student. Who is your teacher? Because he must have learned from someone. Are we here? Before God can send you, because heaven cannot say, go and meet a disciple called uh, Ananias. If that disciple has nobody that has trained him, then you are not called to be called a disciple. Are we here? Amen. Amen. God told uh, 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 Hezekiah, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. He packed the wall. He said, you know what? Uh, you may not. To, to cut the long story short, by the time they got home, the tumor that they prayed for, that that guy was angry about, by the time they went to check, the tumor had disappeared. The tumor that you stand, the tumor was like golf ball, as they said. Do you know golf ball? It had disappeared in the hand of that person, prayed by an instructor. Yeah. I don't care what you've brought tonight. If only you believe. But you must be taught to take your deliverance by yourself. Yeah. Because if 
You fall down under the anointing, and you are standing and say, where is my cigarette? That's not a genuine anointing. Do you know you can fall under an anointing? Which is, you know where you stand and say, who took my cigarette? A proper anointing, you will never smoke again. Are we here? Yeah, nah. A proper anointing. What happens from, is that, what do I do, Lord? The Lordship of God will be made by. When Paul fell down, when he was standing on says, Come, what do you want me to do, Lord? Amen. Amen. He turned his face against the world, he turned his face against everybody he knew. Amen. You know one thing I like about Hezekiah that I wrote down? I like him for one thing. Smart man. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Did he turn his face to mama? He turned his face, he prayed. Did he turn his, fa did, did he turn his face to start checking his, uh, his body? He turned his face to pray. Now, did, you, did he petition any other person that, oh, don't say the Lord I shall die. Let me go to Damascus. Did he say that? He was wise. Did you understand? There, there is a lesson I've learned that when the Almighty has spoken, talk to the Almighty. Yeah. You don't talk to a lesser. You, 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 sir. If it is the Almighty that spoke, it is the Almighty you should speak to. Do you know that sometimes people will come, you understand, people will come and a prophecy is given to you and you go and meet somebody that what do you think God is saying? Was it the one who spoke? I don't know whether it makes sense to you. The Almighty spoke and he met the Almighty. He didn't go to meet any other person. Amen. Amen. What was the problem of King Asa? Let me tell you, what was the problem of King Asa? When Asa had a problem with the lumens and whatever, a, a million soldiers came up against him. He cried to God. And God delivered him. Second Chronicles 14, 12. God delivered him and God pursued. He sent him his way. Now a smaller person now came. He went to seek help from another nation. That was where his problem came. Yeah. A man that ruled for 36 years and there was no war. God gave him rest roundabout. One singular mistake, war returned. I pray no war will return to your life. Amen. If you're not very, very careful, people can put pressure on you. People can put pressure on you and war will return. You, you trust God. You that everybody knows that you trust God. They can just say one thing. You now start running to where you should not run. To. The Bible said there was no war. Did you see? So the Lord smote. And do you understand? I told myself, I said, the one you cry to is the one that will smite. Yeah. You cry to God, God will help you smite. Because verse 11, you stand, as I cry to God. As I cry to God. The one you cry to is the one that will fight your battle. Amen. Amen. Did you see that? They lost smote the Ethiopian before Asa and before Judah. And the Ethiopian fled. Did you see that? And Asa cried. Did you see that? Asa cried to the Lord. And the Lord smote. The one you cry to will be the one that will smite. Oh, are we here? So when they brought this guy, when they told this guy, amen, when they told this guy, you know, he faced God. Do you know that Isaiah, okay, to tell you how mean Isaiah was, do you know that Isaiah did not wait for him to conclude his prayer? Because I thought about it, that why should they come and call you at home? That means the, in the heart of Isaiah, it was sealed. Did you get that? Because as soon as I said, you shall surely die, the man did not, that was the fastest response to God's call. He just turned, because for the man to be at home, he didn't delay. He didn't delay that, you know, uh, no, 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 he didn't delay, because I thought about it. That this man was on the way home, when God told him, that means the prayer was one, not too long, yes. but heartfelt. Yeah. It was not a, a long prayer, because if it was six hours, 
They can't meet Isaiah on the way. Isaiah was not using the walking stick. Does it make sense to you? Heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayer. And Isaiah was just going home, the spirit of the Lord. And may we as men of God be humble people. Amen. Say humble. humble. You know why? Because after saying, God say the Lord, and God said you should reverse it, you may want him to die. That I have said so. How can I, you know, I'm not a Confucianist. Am I lying? No. Do you know that some people will see death? Even when they are praying, they will be saying, may somebody die so that they will know. If, if nobody dies, now they will think I'm a liar. Ha, 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 lagba. Don't do that. God showed it to you because he can trust you. So whether they believe it or not, in heaven you shall be rewarded. Yeah. Oh, are we here? A lot, some men of God have messed up themselves, thinking that prophecies cannot be reversed. No, it has been proven in the life of Hezekiah that you can see evil that God knows about and you can turn things around. A very humble man of God, Isaiah, he went back, he says, not that I didn't hear God, I heard him. But the same God said I should come back to tell you that 15 more years have been added to you. So, in other words, I want to say something. I don't, I don't, I want to say something. You can use prayer to extend your life. So, we are going to pray it. If people have been dying in your family, that death sentence stops today. Amen. If a committee of your friends are dying, and something is telling you, you may still join them. You may still join. You know, this one died, this one died, this one died. You know it can happen. If we, this one will just die, you just die. They say, oh, this pastor died, this one died, this one died, this one. Was, don't, don't, don't laugh. There was a time they called me to come and preach. And the biggest, the biggest set of people I've ever preached with in my entire life. You understand I was about this model. The biggest, at least UK-wise. I saw this one. In fact, when I saw the people on the list, I have to tell them to take, me, take away my name. I said, let me go my land from them. And the person who invited me says, come, don't tell me that crap. How will you be like them if we take away your name? We are the one who invited you. So after that, you know, they lined us up. One of the people now died. Not before the program, after the program, he died. And I had a rumor too. Not knowing it was a lie. I thought it was true. Somebody just rumored it. They just sent a Google that the other bishop too had died. So I ran to Google that said, this one has died. So I went, the, the next thing I did was that I checked how they arranged our picture. <laughs> You do get what I'm trying to say. No, 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 no. I'm going to be truthful to you. Your stamp. I said the first person has gone. The first person. Ah, Oluwa. In this picture, I'm the next. <laughs> I started praying. I started praying. I started praying. I said, what kind of invitation did they give? What kind of? You see, invitation. <laughs> I mean, you don't know what our eyes see. I said, they invited us to go and preach. The first they put in order as a kaput, he has gone. The second one, they said he has died. I checked Google. You know, I Googled it. Some say he has died. Some say, I said, what if he has died? I was calling people. I said, come, is this bishop alive? I said, I'm not sure. <laughs> eh? But to the glory of God, he's alive. Amen. Now, you know why I said it? You know why I'm saying this? The mind. The mind. The mind. You can be in a particular uh, uh, circle. Is that not so? And people, will, one thing will be happening. 
And Satan may say you are among them. Today, I'm saying that you are an exception to the rule. I don't like that, amen. You are an exception to the rule. I say you are an exception to the rule. You are an exception to the rule. You shall not die. And I speak today by the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus. No man, no woman, no child. No minister, no chorister, no usher, no child dies in this assembly in the name of Jesus. I stand against any miscarriage of any kind by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I speak by the authority of God. I speak in the name of Jesus. Amen. No man does. Every evil cursing made for this church, I said to a bliss. Catch fire. Amen. Catch fire. Amen. I said, Catch fire. Every spirit of death, death to an appointment, in the name of Jesus, no man will keep your appointment. No man will keep your appointment. No woman will keep your appointment. In the name of Jesus! Let's have our seats for a moment before we pray. What did Ezekiah do? Your star, what did Ezekiah do? You, you see, why, listen, listen, why should God tell Isaiah <laughs> to tell Ezekiah that he will die? Let me tell you why. Are you ready? Yeah, because the Bible has a way your stand of comparing the spiritual with the spiritual. Amen. Are we here? Amen. Why did God say Ezekiah will die and not live? I want to read what Ezekiah was saying yeah. so that you will learn a lesson. I told you that there are some people suffering secondary infertility today. You know why? Because don't eat labor. The labor of the first child. No more! No more. Ah! No more. John, this, look at what you did to me. John is the husband. No more! After, if I survive this one, don't. No more. No more. No more. This is the end. They locked it. Because when they were saying it, they were not joking. They didn't know that the Bible says in, in labor pain, that when joy comes, you will forget yeah. the pain. Now, they gave back. Everybody's happy. They forgot what they said in the labor room. No more child. Secondary fertility. You told John no more. Yeah. So we say, I want one child. I don't want more than that. The second one will go because you rejected it in the spirit. There's something I want us to check because we are not here to joke. This is serious business. Because before, there's something I want us to check. Joshua chapter 6. There's something I want us to quickly check. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, you are very blessed. Tell that person, face somebody, just tell that person how blessed they are. Tell another neighbor, say neighbor, you are very blessed. 
Okay, tell another person, neighbor, you are very blessed. Are we here? Before we go, uh, did you see secondary fertility? Or some people, they shipped some button and they just said, maybe they seen God missing on the high sea. They, they don't know where the ship is. The ship has not landed. Austin, Austin, you know, I didn't want to do this business. You forced me into it. No more. If I survive this, no, this is the end. <laughs> this is the, they put an eternal end to maybe a door God has opened. They will finally see it. He will say, he will make money. He will invest another. <laughs> no more. That one will now sink naturally. Are we here? The pain. The pain. Of childbirth. John, no more. This is the end. This is the end. John, wicked, wicked. wicked. It's not wicked. You, it was a mutual agreement. <laughs> you saw Pastor Stanley spoke in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> Do I interpret what he said? I won't tell you. <laughs> Did you get that? It's just emotion. Emotion. Emotional pain. Joshua chapter 6 verse 26. And Joshua adjudged them at that time saying, Cause be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof which is in his firstborn. And in the youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. Did you see that? When Joshua destroyed the city of Jericho, he placed the curse. He said, whoever shall build it back again, we build it, we start the foundation with his first son, as when he's completing it, the second one will die. It was said that a thousand years later, how many years? They're looking at me like spiritual people. A thousand years later, every word you speak, can I tell you one thing? If the Lord tells us that we shall give account of every idle word, that means there are no idle words. It is called idle not because it is powerless. Yes. Yes. It is called idle because it is anti-purpose, it is anti-redemption. I do words are words that are anti-purpose, anti-redemption, anti-progress, anti-prosperity, anti-healing, anti-joy, anti-bliss. Those are I do words. He said you will give account of every I do on the day of judgment. Now, we don't know where the day of judgment will be. Now, they wrote, Jesus wrote that 2,000 years ago. That means the words they spoke 2,000 years ago. If the day of judgment will come, maybe in another 2,000, making 4,000, those words will rise up for judgment. So that means words don't die. Oh, my God. I pray that we will understand what I'm trying to bring up. That means words don't die. You shall give account on the day of judgment. Some have died 5,000 years ago. And they will give account of their words. So why can't the world just dissolve and we forget about it? It has, let's now check First Kings chapter. Are we ready? Amen. Sixteen thirty-four. Whether that thing happened, the the Lord spoke to me today. The secret of Joshua. He just he, he just dropped it in my spirit, and that one you don't read it. He said, "I want to tell you the secret of Joshua." He said, "You know the secret of Joshua." Are you ready to know it? Free of charge. Let's first check first king. Then I'll tell you the secret of Joshua. He just dropped it. And when I tell you, you will now judge whether I had or I didn't hear. 1634. Let's read it. In his days did Hael, 
the better light, built Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof with what? Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by what? Joshua, the son of Nun. After about 1,000 years, what he said carelessly. And when I was meditating on this, the Lord spoke to me. He said, do you know that it was the same Joshua that commanded the son? 93 million miles away. 93 million miles. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> this moist thing, 93 million. The sun is over 1 million times the size of the earth. They will put 1 million times the size of this earth inside the sun, and they will say, bring more. And one person's tongue says, stop. And the Lord said, I want to tell you his secret. So that if you want your words to be as powerful as that, say, Lord, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. He said he was the one who told us, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. He said, a man who has my word on his lips and in his heart will speak and he will see Joshua kind of results. Yeah. Have you noticed that one of the greatest strengths of Joshua is his tongue? You spoke, you destroyed Jer uh, Jericho, you, you placed the curse, a thousand years later it happened. You spoke to the son, the son had you, and it's in history that there was a day the son did not go down. Yeah. A man like you and I, the Lord said, I want to. I've never had it anywhere. It was, I've never had it. The Lord just dropped it and said, I want to tell you the secret of Joshua. What made his words so strong? What made his words so powerful? Are we here? This book of the Lord, Joshua 1.8, is his secret. Jo the word of God must be on your lips. Any man that has the word in his heart and on his lips is a dangerous person. When he speaks, don't think heaven will just ignore it. Yeah. Did you see that? Are we here? Yes. Amen. Amen. In the next few minutes, we'll rise up to pray. Amen and amen. amen. We will rise up to pray. If Jesus trod for three days, that means he taught in the night too. Yeah. You do read St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, 1 to 3. He said after three days, they had been with him for three days and forgot. They were so absorbed in the world that they forgot to eat. But that is supernatural anyway. <laughs> Are we here? Yes, amen and amen. Yes. Can you spare me a few minutes? I want to show you what put Hezekiah into trouble. All right, God bless you. Now, Isaiah chapter 38, I read from verse number 10. But I will read, I will read this from, how many of us want to apply the secret of Joshua from today? Raise your hand and receive grace. Raise your hand that, Father, let your word be on my lips. Yes, pray it, pray it. Go, brother, has sabrahanta. Receive that grace. A greater than Joshua is talking. A, a greater than Joshua. A greater than Joshua. Scanna manus kosko brigadia. Yes, a brakatos kosko kosko brakatiska. Yes, a brakatos kosko brakatizoska brakadas. Yes, a brakat kosko kosko brakatis kosko brigadesh. Idalamanas kosko skabarati. Ya zembron dos koskus kabarates, kabra manasis. Yo se breketus kas kabrakadis. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Can I continue now? Let me read from verse number 10. But I will read from the New Living Translation. I will, I will like you to listen very well. Listen very well because in King James, it may be too... King James for you, you may not understand. I'll quickly read that. And I will tell you, I will just ask you a question after I read. I said, in the prime of my life, must I now enter the place of the dead? Did you see that? Yes, when sickness came, you saw what he's saying. Yes. Huh? It, was that a good word? No. Do you think that was what he prayed that, that gave him 15 more years? No. 
Please answer. No, sir. You can follow it with King James as I'm reading it so that you will just understand what I'm saying. You follow King James. Don't read it out. I'll be reading it. That's verse 10. I, am I to be robbed of the rest of my years? Verse 11. I said, never again will I see the Lord while I'm still in the land of the living. Never again will I see my friends or be with those who live in this world. Is that a prayer or a curse? A curse. Please answer me, please. Do you think that was a prayer that turned his life around? You know, he recounted. He recounted. When they said, set your affairs in order, it was these poisonous words. This was why God said you will die. I love you. You understand? I love you very well. Because if we find out later, he said, I repented of my sin. But you said you were upright. What were now your sins? If you read uh, uh, Isaiah 38, 1 to 3, he said, Lord, you know how upright I am, how pure I am. So where did you see your sins? Where did sins come? Toward the end. The Lord must have shown him. Verse 12, my life has been blown away like a shepherd's tent in a storm. You didn't say anything. Just react. If you like it, it's just my. If you don't like it, say, oh. oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like that. It has been cut short. <laughs> As when a weaver cuts clues from a loom. Suddenly, my life was over. You didn't hold it so very well. I waited patiently all night, but I was torn apart as though by lions. Suddenly, my life was over. Delirious, I chattered like a swallow or a crane. So, you see, chatter boxes, we should be very careful. You know, typewriter. Go and get my tape. The best time to keep quiet. The best time to talk less. It's a classic. That tape has delivered a lot of people. When Jesus Christ was about to go to the cross, did he, he open it, not his mouth. This one, there was no cross, so just boil. He opened all his mouth. Jesus Christ said, he said, I know the prince of the air is around me. I won't say anything again. Don't try a talk less. Because you will, a lot of things, you will have talked about people out of anger. Later you will reconcile, but a seed has been, a, a, an evil seed has been planted. Must you talk? Even if somebody has offended, you can't report that thing to God and say, Father, I receive peace, I receive. Must you talk? Now, when you now say to what happened, will you be bold, will you be a man or a woman of integrity to go and tell the person that everything I told you about this person we have said to it was a mistake? No. This is how we scatter places and scatter friendship. I chatter like what? A swallow or a crane. Then I moan like a morning dove. My eyes grew tired of looking to heaven for help. I am in trouble. Lord, help me. Now, do you think this was what he prayed? No. Because did he do an all night? No. No, sir. Did God call Isaiah, Isaiah the second day? No, sir. No. So this was not the prayer that turned things around. This was the prayer that put him into trouble. No. That was why God said, put your house in order. Every little thing, you understand, I'm sick and tired of sick and tired, I will do this, I will do this. As a spiritual person, you are putting yourself into trouble. Because every, con you are speaking confusion into your life. Yeah. A lot of us, I will say it. London is, you know, there is no good in London, I can just relocate, I can just, you release them into the air. And demons are busy working to confuse you demons. You said this place is not good. They will make life unbearable. The 
They will make life unbearable for you. You think you can just ask, especially if you know you are a prayerful person. Your words should be few. That is why when I, when I call you and I speak to you, I will tell you, I am not joking. I will call you. You may think it's arrogance. That's your cup of tea. Because I'm a man of prayer. So a man of prayer should value his words. So when I hold you, I say, it shall be well with you. I will tell you I'm not joking. So that if nothing happens, it's you, not me. Are we here? You just talk anyhow. Look at, and God said, you know what? <laughs> you shall not live, you shall die. This was worse sentencing to death. Okay, now listen. I thought about it. Before God told him he was going to die, didn't God have the solution? Think of it. He said, cut fig tree, boil it, and pull it all over his body, and it shall be healed. So God didn't... If God just thought about it after, then it's not God. Are we here? Because before you can be God, you know everything. You are everywhere, and you are all powerful. Are we here? So God now thought about it later, that now that he has repented, what do we now do? So the answer had always been there. His mouth cut it short. Can I say one or two things? But what could I say? For he himself sent this sickness. He accused God again. He said God sent the sickness. Now I will walk humbly throughout my years. Because of this anguish I have felt. Now verse 16. From verse 16. You understand? The story changed from verse 16. You understand? Because we didn't have, know the discussion Isaiah must have told him. Because we don't have everything. Maybe Isaiah must have told him, you shall surely die because your words are not pleasing to God. Because verse 16, Lord, your discipline is good for it leads to life and health. Can you see? You restore my health and you allowed me to live. Everything has changed. Yet this anguish was good for me. For you have rescued me from death and have forgiven all my sins. Did you see now? The story has changed. Why was it good? Because why? God wants you and I to learn from Hezekiah. That's why it's a good lesson. Whatever you understand. When you say experience is the best teacher, you are a rebellious person. Other people's experience it should be the best yes. teacher. Somebody put his hand on electricity. You saw him. He vibrated and shocked and vomited. He died. He said, what happened to him? <laughs> ah, what shook him like that? Oh, you mean he died? Okay. He died. Okay. <laughs> you yourself will go. Because you saw that he died, you don't put your hand again. When people are, hey, don't go there. He touched that thing. He died. What are you saying? Don't touch it. You die. So that becomes the problem. They say experience is the best teacher for the rebellious, for the stupid, for the ignorant. Are we here? Now, we have, we have said it now. We have learned from Hezekiah now. All right? We have learned from Hezekiah. Are you going to say you open your mouth anyhow? Can I tell you one thing about Nigeria? Before Nigeria will recover, it will take God. Yeah. Now, let me tell you, it is not because we have bad leaders. No, 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 no. It is because we have bad language. Yeah. It's not because of bad leaders. Our language will keep giving us the leader that we make our words come to pass. Nigeria is finished. So any leader that will bounce you back will not get there. It is the one that will finish you. Imagine 50, okay, let's assume 
about 50 million Nigerians are complaining. See how much we have filled the air with complaining and more money. And in Nigeria, it's over. That country, now nah, it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. You understand? These are pastors. And later, shall we pray for our nation? <laughs> Let us pray for our nation that God will give us good leader. <laughs> what happened to it is finished. A double-minded man is unstable in all this way. Let not that man will receive anything from the Lord. So if you can't receive from the Lord, Satan will come to his aid. If only, what I'm saying now, if only Nigerians, they can have national orientation, that regardless of who is there, can we just speak the right words and beg everybody just for one year and reverse what we've been saying? So that any time you say Nigeria is finished, they should put a law, slap the person, nothing will happen. <laughs> Do you understand my point? You can only say it in your bedroom, no more public place. That now the law, there is a law, anybody that speaks ill should receive a slap. And you take it, to, you know you will not talk again. Just send SS, then, uh, I know you trust our policemen. That just arrest anybody who speaks it. How can they record it? They will just be packing and making money. So you will not have to keep quiet. That is the greatest problem. Because people underestimate how powerful words are. Amen. Amen. Let's check now from King James. Before we stand up now. From King James. Verse 37. Uh, verse 7. Of Isaiah 38, verse 7, because we want to pray now. Are you ready to pray? Have you, have you been enriched? Are you full? It, the Bible says, with a well informed, make war. You understand? Don't just come and begin to. They said, no. After wisdom has come, then make war. Do you understand? After you have been equipped, then make war. You cannot, they just recruited you. Uh, Britain is looking for a uh, green beret. You just went there, they packed all of you. No training, no boot, no gun. You understand? That is suicide. That is harakiri, suicide. They are going there to kill you. No, you start jogging. You start. Look at before the British football, the three lions, before they went for World Cup, they took them through military training. They put them inside, they trained them like marines. Like uh, British soldiers. You understand? They put that they, they were gasping for air. They said to talk from them. I don't know whether they have ever done it. I watched it. Do you understand? Maybe he gave them the same. And with the toughness, now he didn't, they couldn't skate through Croatia. Now maybe next World Cup, they will go there and do it more be longer. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 7, can we read it? This, this is off. Please, if we can help me put it on. Uh, can we read it? Amen. Amen. You see? He said, this shall be the sign. Uh, verse 8, what is the sign? You know, the, there is a son there of Ahaz. He said, the son... You know, it has gone down. He said it will go back. Yeah. 10 degrees backward. And I want to say it today. If your finances have no dive, it's coming back again. Yeah. That is restoration. Yeah. Amen. Did you see that? Behold, I will bring again the shadows of the degrees, which is gone down. So whatever has gone down, God is going to bring it back. Yeah. In the sun, dial of what? Ahaz, 10 degrees backward. So the sun returned 10 degrees by, by which de uh, degrees it was gone down. So the same way in which you've gone, God is going to restore it back. Yeah. He asked for a sign. True? Is that not so? When, listen, listen, listen. Because the Bible cannot say everything. When he was praying, in his prayer, did you see, did you see show me sign? 
Read it here, you won't see it. Now check verse 22. Because they can't read everything. He was now the one writing his own story. Check verse 22. Read it. 38 verse 32. Please read it out. Please read it out. Did you see that now? Did you see that? Did you see that? He said he asked for a sign. But in the prayer, did you see, give me a sign? No. There were other things he said that they didn't put down. But he said, I asked the Lord to give me a sign. And the Lord said, I will give you a sign. What a, because that means God did everything possible to help him recover. And God will do everything possible to help him recover today. In the name of Jesus. Did you see that? Show me a sign. But you don't need a sign. The word of God is the greatest sign. Amen. If you have the word, because they told Jesus, show me a sign. How can the word stand and you say, show me a sign? He said, I won't show you a sign. And if we are under that gospel generation seek a sign, but there is no sign that shall be shown except the sign of prophet Jonas. So that as, the, as, the, uh, as Jonas was in the belly of the fish, three days and three nights, so that the son of man be the belly of the earth. So he was talking about himself. That I am the greatest sign. You can't ask for sign. Amen and amen. amen. The greatest thing you should act no today is faith. Amen. When I say you are not dying, you believe you are not dying. Don't tell me which said I will die. That is one problem we have. Oh, you shall not die. He says, come on, the woman that told me. Everybody the woman has told. Has to. None of them is alive. You have more faith in witches than in the anointed. We have been so programmed. We have been so programmed. If all the pilots all over the world were Africans, eh, we will have more plane crashes. They say they are doing him from the house. The white man doesn't believe. Whether there is wish, there is no wish, I'm an expert. And God your son, as a man thinketh, is what is helping them. Not that there are no wishes. As a man thinketh. As a man thinketh. Yeah. Listen to what the Lord is telling me now. Ezekiah changed his language and his situation changed. As you change your language now, your situation will change. Amen. Now, don't tell me that, Pastor, you are always talking about words we should have learned. I speak to elders. Their words are not good. And I tell myself that if elders talk like that, do you understand my point? If those I call elders are this poisonous, are this corrosive, then God has to reflect because we yield to the flesh. We used to the flesh. Why can't you just be saying, every time things are, why can't you just be saying, I am blessed and highly favored. I am blessed and highly favored. I am blessed and highly favored. And vow that come, at this occasion, they will not, the enemy will not take advantage of me. If you are an elder, you should know you are an elder, that your words carry power. <coughs> that is why your prayers are not being answered. Because it's mixed with a bitterness, rage. Are we here? The Lord just told me now the secret. I've never had it. I just had it loud. He said, I want to show you the secret of Joshua. I want to show you the secret of Joshua. You know, I did, I did, I've never connected it in my entire life. That the one who placed a curse on Jericho was the one who stopped the sun. And the Lord just linked. He said, did you see that? The secret, and the Lord now told me that when everybody was talking negatively in Numbers 13, did he join them? I said, no. In, in a moment. I said, my God. In a moment. You see, when your spirit is opened, yeah. you will receive divine downloads. Wait until I prepare my message. The secret of Joe. You know this one he just told me. By the time I will now go down, 
and said to the secret of Joshua. You will now see what. When everybody was, was negative, Joshua didn't join them. He was part of the 12 spies. So that was his lifestyle. So people who will speak to the son and the son will listen must not be negative on that. People who will place a curse and 1,000 years later, the thing will still revive as if he just said it. Some of us, even the curses you have caused now, they don't even fear your curse again. They even fear. Didn't a man of God tell somebody you will die within whatever? The guy went, he was drinking coffee. He looked at the man, you will die. I give you how many days. The man has spent almost one year plus. Nothing has happened. Don't allow emotion to rule you. You understand? Because you don't say we ultimately die. You gave it time. So yeah. the time, it did die within that time. So yeah. finish. Even you who plays the curse, you will die one day. So the, if, if man finally dies, don't say it's your curse because yeah. you gave it. it. Yeah. Are we here? Are we here? Yes, sir. Let's rise up. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope the clap offering is not for me. It will never be for me. It's for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. I want to do that it's not false humility. That is, I mean it from the depth of my heart. Yes, stand. What I put that you did, you did not receive. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yes. I am blessed. I am blessed. So we want tonight, yes, stand. Tonight, this night of wonders, we want to deal with health related issues. Health related issues. Oppression related issues. And restoration related issues. Are we here? Yes. Now, I want to tell you, you can ask me now that, oh, what about immigration-related issues? If you are listening, you know that your case, immigration-wise, has been set to. Yes, sir. Yes. True? Yes, sir. Yeah, because God said the Lord. Yeah. Hey. Somebody change, God said the Lord. Uh-uh. Somebody said, change does say the Lord. Put verse 1. We have to read it before we start praying. Somebody change does say the Lord. Read it. Let's go. <laughs> no, no, no. Shout, shout, thus said the Lord very well. Thus the Lord. Now read it. Read it from thus said the Lord. Make it loud. From thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. Set the house in order. For thou shalt die and not live. Wow. Thus said the Lord. Check verse 4. The same mouth that pronounced your judgment will pronounce your blessing. Amen. You didn't get that. If only, listen, if only you can pray. The same ink that type rejection. If only. They didn't send any other prophet. The same. From the same office in which you are rejected, from that same office, they will write to you. We prayed one day, a Caribbean woman came. They directed that to this church. Because, uh, thank you, Sister Grace. They directed that. No paper, nothing. In fact, her case was hopeless. There is nothing to present. We prayed. Did you see the paper they brought? Are you here? You saw the paper? They wrote her. There is no basis. You understand? You are not in any way qualified. We checked your case. There is no basis. There is no basis for Give me you, but we want to have mercy on you. Home office. They said, on compassionate ground, we are giving you your paper because 
there is nothing to stand upon. Did I read it here? Please answer. Thank you. We prayed. Yes, Caribbean woman. Yes, that, that was what I'm saying. She was the one that brought it. There is no basis. We have no basis to give you. You don't have, there is nothing to stand upon. But we will have mercy on you. <laughs> you have to have heart. If you are double-minded that you are going home, you will go home. You go home. I'm telling you, we'll go home. Your heart has to be solid. There was another person. I was ministering like this during what a life, because I'm going to share it. That woman, we have not, I am Brother Tony. Brother Tony, please give me a hand, please. Just let me shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. The woman's case was so bad that that bad is B W A D. Bad. Thank you. I don't want to, because ever since we've been sharing the testimony, there are things that are too personal that we have not said. Because if we say it, then you will understand what we are saying. It was bad. You know, when somebody will come, you know, they say, oh, a woman wants to see you. And the woman was so smart, he didn't allow me to come down from the altar. She met me at the altar, just jammed me at the altar. Because somebody has said, but I told you, just told you, ah, you will see my pastor. No problem. As soon as he's coming, you hold him. So we heard. They told me the case. I look up, I look down. This case, there is no ground. I just told the woman, may the Lord have mercy on you. That was all I could say. I said, go. May the Lord have mercy on you. Go and start asking God for mercy and go. She came on the 8th. Is that not so? 8 or 7. By the 25th of that month, they gave her her stay. Without, I don't know what happened. I just, I just got a text. I got a text from, I didn't delete it, it's still in my phone. No, I don't delete such things. There are emails I don't delete. Too. I'll have a folder for it. If we deny, I'll bring it out. It's true. I don't delete. Lie, lie. So you can't share testimony like this. You say it's not so. This is it. On the 25th, what happened? Because by virtue of what we know, by virtue of what we know about it, there's no way. There's no way. It was so bad that the person was just saying that, you stand, even if they will deport me, eh, I don't want to go in shame. Let them just give it to me and let me now go. So to, to tell you how bad. May the Lord have mercy on what? You. Amen. And God of heaven and the earth turn things around. Are we here? Are we going home? Yes. Amen and amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We saw, thus said the Lord, you shall die. Let's see the second one. Four and five. From the same mouth. Too. From the same mouth. Because, you see, <laughs> if you can't catch this revelation, you see where I put my hand on my head. You see, if you can't, if you can just catch what I'm saying, that the same mouth that I pronounce the evil shall reverse it. Amen. On your knees of prayer. Amen. On your knees of prayer. Amen. You understand? On your knees of prayer. Yasabarata. Now, I have a question to ask you. If you ask me now, two plus two, is that what they are saying with God all things are possible for? Two plus two, I said four. He said, hey, hallelujah, with God all things are possible. That is not what we are saying. Are we here? Yes, when you tell me now that, Pastor Olu, two to the power of 1,000, what it is, then I will say with God all things are possible. Because if you want me to say it here now, then I will say with God all things are possible. I don't know. 
If I can say the figure. Because there are calculators that can bring it out. Get a scientific calculator, just say 2 to the power of 1,000. If you bring E, error, that means I can't do it. <laughs> are, we, are we getting what I'm trying to say? I will tell, to the power of 1,000. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you have that amount till you die, <laughs> till you die. You have made. If you didn't give me that amount, you understand? I don't even want to know how much it is. If they say, okay, do you understand? If do you want that or how much you have spent before I say, give me that. Or you will pay back. I say, I agree because I won't pay back. They will pay me. I'm a mathematician, so I know what I'm saying. Two to the power of a thousand, you know what it is? Two to the power of of uh, of a thousand. Two to the power of six alone. It's already 64. To the power of six. To the power of 12, 64 times 64. To the power of 18, 64 times 64 times 64. I'm I mean, times a thousand. I don't think anybody can have that kind of money in our world. Because I wanted to have faith. The same mouth, if you can get what God is saying and you are happy with God, raise your two hands, let him see you. The same mouth. Now let's say it. Then came the word of the Lord. Wait, 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 wait. Whose word is coming now? Is it my word? Do you know you came to get a reversal of what I've been told you? <laughs> Give Jesus a big hand. <laughs> then came the word of the Lord to me too. Because there were things that brought you here. Medical report. You shall die brought some here. And you understand? And we are saying that you are going back because there is a counter word. Yes. Then came the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord coming to you is reversing everything you have received. Uh -huh. verse, verse 5. Mm, wait, make, make it louder because faith comes by hearing and hearing very loud. Oh, yeah, make it louder. Let's go. Wait. Who had the problem? Who is God sending people to? So, if you have an issue today, who is God talking to? Me. Me. Did you get that? So, God is not talking to somebody who has no problem. Yeah. If you know you have a problem, go and tell the person, that sister, that brother. It is you God is sending people to. Yeah. Ezekiah was the one who had problems. Ezekiah was the one who wept. Ezekiah was the one they sent. Continue. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, this night will bring addition. Yeah. Addition of health. Yeah. Addition of promotion. Yeah. Addition to this church. Yeah. Addition of grace. Yeah. Addition of health. Yeah. Addition of children. Yeah. Addition of peace. Yeah. Addition of honor. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. It shall bring addition. Amen. It shall bring addition. Amen. If we hear, I shall add. It shall bring addition. Amen. It shall bring addition. Amen. It's addition. Amen. Addition. Amen. Whatever you have lost shall be multiplied back Amen. to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, go and say to what? Hezekiah. Go and say to what? Hezekiah. And if you are a, a, maybe a Hezekiah here today. God tell, said I should tell you. Your life will never be the same again. Yeah. Now listen to me. 
there is a new wave of glory Amen. that has come into the church. Amen. Oh, why are you so bold? Because I prayed it. I'm a believer. Yeah. A new wave of glory has come. Amen. Listen to me. In this new wave of glory, it is not a mist in the air. It is for the people. Amen. When we are talking about a new wave of glory, the glory is for the people. Amen. Oh, God. Amen. We can't say a new wave of glory, then the altar will be floating on its own. We don't need a floating altar. You are the person. Amen. It's a new life. Amen. It's a new life. Amen. Before we pray, open your mouth and first thank God for what God has taught us. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Yes, Kaya la 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 bos. Yam bam 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 das kosh kofrege. Open your mouth and declare. Rabba bari otos ebrigadas. Yes, I'm Bram Bandas Koshko Vregedi. Yes, I'm Brakas Koshko Vregetis Kaskavara. Open your mouth and just thank God. 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 Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Listen to me so that you can have faith. You know the only demerit of persistence. The only demerit of persistence is that it can give you even what is not in God's way. That's a demerit of persistence. So in case you want something desperately, are we here? Just know that you will receive it. Amen. Now, if persistence, listen to me. If persistence can give you what is not God's way, how much more persistence yes. for what is God's way? Amen. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's because we are not prayerful. And we are going to pray. Do you understand? Help me, please. We are going to pray. Tonight, you understand? We are going to pray tonight. Do you understand? We are going to pray. Israel needed a king. God said, I don't want king for you. I don't want a king. Let me be your king. They said, no, we want to have king like other nations. And he said, no, let me. He said, no. They carry placard. We no go agree. Oh, we no go agree. We want king. Hey, we want king. Wait, we want king. And God told Samuel, yeah. he said, give them what they want. Against. Yeah. He said, ah, this king, ha, ah, a king will oppress you. Yeah. They will carry your wife. When your wife is beautiful and the king sees it, he will take your wife. They say, yes, we want. Ah, he will take your usher. They say, we want. So why are you blaming that David killed Uriah? God told you before that the king, why are you saying Ahab took neighbors that God? They did not tell you before. He said they will take your vineyard. They will take your wives. You said you will want. Oh, he, didn't he tell you before? He told you that ah, a king will come that will take your wife and kill you. They say, he said give it to us. Ha, ah, a, a king will check your usher. Your car will be more beautiful. It's just like somebody having a bigger car than me in the church. And I would just say, uh, that, let me be your pastor. Uh, hey, hey, apostle, apostle will take your car and say, give it to us. Okay. You said that apostle should dedicate the car. And they took the key away. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Did he not want them? Yeah. He want, God is here. Yeah. But even by the fluidity of the word, you know that 
The Holy Ghost is here. Powerful! Yes, sir. Powerful! Yes, sir. What we convince you again? That God is here. He's mightily here. Yeah. Persistence. The demerit of persistence is that he can give you something that is not God's way. Persistence. Persistence can deliver to you what is not even in God's way for your life. How much more what is in God's way? How much more what is in God's way? How much more what is in God's will? We want a king. I don't want it for you. Say, I say we want. It's okay. Have it. Then you say you want healing? Oh, God will not heal me. It's a lie. Do you know what the Lord told me today? Are you ready to hear this? I shouted. I shouted. The Lord spoke a word to me. He said, healing is prophecies fulfilled. Hi. This is deep. Because some are looking at me. Isaiah prophesied. And the Lord said, he was not speaking gibberish. He said, imagine a mysterious, somebody just came and wrote mysteriously. And the thing came to pass about 700 years later. That there is somebody uh, uh, by his father. He didn't even know what he was saying. But they were in articulate speech. They were not gibberish. Are we here? For that alone, I called that like that. A person lived. He did not even know who he was talking about. He didn't even know who Jesus was going to be. If I just because he was not writing. He didn't know the depth of his prophecy. And the thing came to fulfill. They now beat Jesus on something that didn't make sense to Isaiah. We now saw sense in the beating. From by the side you shall be healed to by the side you will be healed. First Peter 2.24. Healing is prophecy fulfilled. It's not prophecy that shall be fulfilled. Oh God. In your body, in my body, prophecy shall be fulfilled tonight. Are we here? Healing is prophecy fulfilled. Healing is prophecy fulfilled. It is not prophecy that shall be fulfilled. It's fulfilled already. Take it! Take it! Take it! Take it! Take it! He needs his prophecy fulfilled. Oh my God. Not prophecy that shall be fulfilled. No, it is prophecy fulfilled. A virgin shall conceive, he shall be beaten. Prophecy. Has he been beaten? Prophecy fulfilled. So you are going to tell your body, body. The prophecy concerning my health has been fulfilled. So respond now. Rise up and open your mouth. Tell your body. Rise up, everyone. Take it.
are going to tell that thing, whatever it is, and I'm going to tell that thing, that you can't be sluggish. Disappear. Now listen, if God does not want us to be perfectly healed, he will not ask that man, how do you see? Yes, 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 come. Yes. So he didn't, he asked him immediately. He didn't say be confessing, come back. You stand. How do you see? He said, I see men as what? Trees. He said, No, you are not seeing properly. Come for his second dose. He gave it to him. He rose. How do you see? Ah, I said, that's Sister Sandra, that's Brother Jato, that is Pastor, that is Brother Victor, that is Lady D, that is Sister Odette. Eh, hey, it's okay, you are here, go. That is what shall happen here today. Yes. Listen to me. That you came here, you went to see your doctor, and it is the same story, I reject it. Yes. The story shall change. Yes. Matthew 11, I'm telling you, Matthew 11, verse number, because the other time I said something was moving in somebody's uh, right, whatever, the person didn't signal until after that I said, no, you should have said so. Should have said so. So that when the Spirit is manifesting, just say so. Because God of heaven and the earth is going to move in his own special way. Are we here? Amen and amen. Praise God Almighty. Expect the move of the Spirit. Are we here? Are we here? Yes, sir. Matthew 11, verse 12. Matthew 11, verse 12. You are going to take it. You, are, by, you see, he said, deliver thyself. You take it by force. You take it by force. You take it by force. Let that right hand, whatever is moving in that right hand, in the name of Jesus, now disappear. Yes! Yes. Amen. Disappear. Amen. Is the, are you the one? Come out, come out, come out, come out. Yes, the right hand. In the name of Jesus, just come because it's moving. Ramos Cosco Vregedia. Yes, is Father. In the name of Jesus. Please raise that right hand. Raise it. In the name of Jesus. You reveal, you reveal, you reveal to deliver. Whatever is in this life, disappear! Go, get out! Out in Jesus' name. Rise up. Now, because the power of God is here, go there, begin to, because it has left me, so it has to leave you. Go there and begin to do what you can do. Just begin to thank God. Just begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Raise your hands. Yes, begin to thank God. Just be there. Look at me. Just raise it. Look at me. My... Yes. Begin to do that because it has left me. If it was still with me, yes. Do that and keep giving God the glory. Keep praising God. Raise your hands and just worship God. Raise your hand and just worship God. Matthew 11, Matthew 11, anyone with waist pain, waist pain, waist pain, come out. Yes, waist pain, waist pain, waist pain, yes, waist pain. Yes, yes. West Spain, yes. Yalamanas Kosko Bregedi Baha. Raise your hand and just watch, help me worship God. Yes, yes. West Spain, West Spain. Yasa Bregadas Kaska Baraha. Yes, help me. Yes, good, thank you. Come close to them. Speak in tongues. Just help me begin to pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Yabarakas Kosko Bregedi. Ramanas kos kos kobregedia. Yes, Ramanas kos kos kobregedia kalaba. Yes, I'm Ramanas kos kos kobregedia skakiriana. Oh, Ramanas kos kos Ramanas soko Ramanas satana. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of Jesus.